Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be talking about shortcuts to help increase your efficiency inside of Fusion. So first, let's get started by identifying shortcuts and figuring out how we can set them up on our own. Anytime we're taking a look at a tool in a drop-down menu, if there's a current shortcut assigned to it, we'll see that letter represented on the right-hand side. This is true for sketch tools or any of the other workspaces that you're working in. If you want to change the shortcut for a tool, you can use the three dot icon on the right hand side and select change keyboard shortcut. This also allows you to pin or remove it from toolbars or add it to your shortcuts menu, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So making sure that we can identify current shortcuts is quick and easy by just taking a look at the tools in a drop down menu. Some of these will already have default shortcuts, and in this video, we're only looking at defaults. So if you have changed or reconfigured yours, of course, that will be different. So now that we know where to find and set those shortcut keys, let's take a look at a couple of common ones. First is gonna be the shift key. Now holding down shift and the middle mouse wheel allows us to free orbit, but shift also allows us to make multiple selections on the screen. And one of the big differences here between using shift and control is that shift works with box drag, but control does not. So if you're using the box drag method to select objects, using shift is gonna be the best way to do this because it will allow you to add or remove from that selection. Now let's talk about control. Now, control is good for a couple of different things. Holding down control and using the numbers four through nine on your number pad will allow you to change the display of the objects on the screen. This can also be found of course in your display settings under visual styles and the shortcuts are listed on the right hand side. Now this is a very quick way to go back and forth between a shaded view and a wireframe view, depending on what you're trying to do with your model. But the control keys power really comes down to when we're making selections during a tool. Now what I mean by this is if we're using the fillet for example, and we select an edge, as soon as we apply a dimension to that in order to add to our selection, we need to hold down the control key. Now, this is true whether we're selecting things like profiles from a sketch to create an extrude, or if it's edges for things like fillets and chamfers. So holding down control is the only way to bring that selection back after we've entered that value. In this case, we're gonna say cancel, double click the mouse wheel, which is another shortcut that allows us to fit the model to screen. If we happen to zoom window on a specific part of our design, double clicking that mouse wheel is a quick way to get back. Also note that there is a shortcut associated with this F6 on the keyboard. Now, in my opinion, double clicking the mouse wheel is much easier. For some of our next shortcuts, let's go ahead and hop into a sketch. Shortcuts are often used in sketches to increase the efficiency while sketching. Things like selecting bodies or edges and using P on the keyboard to project those references into our current sketch plane is a quick way to gather that information. Another thing that we can do is we can begin to add specific entities and we can use D on the keyboard to invoke our dimension tool. Right clicking will open up a couple of other options and we'll talk about this marking menu in a second, but notice at the bottom with things like dimensions, we can make this a horizontal, vertical, or aligned dimension just by using that right click menu. Let's go ahead and delete that sketch entity and I'm gonna use the offset tool once again, if we take a look at our modified panel, offset is the shortcut key O. By using this, we can quickly offset, use minus 0.5 and hit enter. When we're inside of a sketch and we make a single selection, and for this, let's go ahead and hide the bodies, that's gonna grab a single entity. If we double click this, it'll allow us to select the entire chain in our sketch. And once again, this can be a very quick way to make these selections. And of course, you can also do things like box drag if needed. Let's go ahead and bring all those bodies back, which again is a shortcut key by selecting a body and hitting V on the keyboard. This is our visibility shortcut that allows us to hide and show bodies that are currently selected. Let's go ahead and finish this sketch and let's begin creating an extrude. Now there is a shortcut for extrude, which is E on the keyboard. And as we try to select our sketch profile, you can see that it's hard because it's on the other side of a solid body. Holding down the left mouse button will allow us to show a parent-child relationship window as well as a depth selection option. The depth selection allows us to select anything through our current face selection. In this case, we want this profile and we can rotate this around and pull it through our model. I'm gonna use the options here to go through all and make it symmetric on both sides, allowing it to cut through our model. So that was a quick and easy way for us to use that through selection by simply holding down the left mouse button. Now let's take a look at a couple of more things. 
The next thing that we want to cover is the S shortcut key. This is our design shortcuts, but it has two purposes. The design shortcuts allow us to add shortcuts for tools to our menu that we can quickly access wherever the cursor is. So anytime we press S, it's going to show up wherever our mouse cursor is. But we can also just simply begin typing to find a command. For example, if I wanted to use interference detection, I can start to type that and simply hit enter to invoke the interference detection command. Select the bodies on the screen, computed interference, and in this case there is none, and then we can cancel that dialog. So using that S key is a great way for us to quickly find tools. If we wanted to use, let's say, the measure tool, and we wanted to add it to our design shortcuts, once it appears, we can use this up arrow on the right-hand side, which will begin adding it to our design shortcuts. Now, anytime we hit the S key, we can simply use measure. Note that measure displayed underneath this also has a letter next to it, I, which is its shortcut. So if we go to our inspect menu, we can see measure has a shortcut key I, and by simply pressing that, we'll start the measure command. Now, let's talk about the right-click marking menu because this is one of the more powerful tools inside of the Fusion interface. If we use a right-click menu, at the very bottom, all of the tools that we have added to our S or our design shortcuts are displayed at the bottom. Also note that some options are going to be contextual, meaning if I select an edge and right-click, I will get a list of contextual options for creating a selection set or adding a fillet and chamfer, for example. If I select a face, my options are going to change. In this case, I can create a shell or a selection set. So our right-click menu is extremely powerful, but this object here at the top, our marking menu, allows us to get another level of efficiency. So at the bottom of this, we have our sketch menu, and then inside of here, we've got our rotation where we can go to different tools. If I wanted to create a center diameter circle, for example, I can do this quickly by holding down the right mouse button, dragging down, and then back up to that position. This will ask me to start a new sketch, select a sketch plane, and I can sketch my rectangle, circle, or whatever geometry I want to create. And now I've created a new sketch with that geometry quickly. Now, the marking menu also has a couple of options for redoing or undoing, repeating the last command at the 12 o'clock position, and redo and undo also change to be OK and cancel whenever we're inside of a command. For example, if we start a fillet, the right-click menu is now OK or cancel. This allows us to quickly and easily navigate through these menus without having to move the cursor all the way to the right for a dialog or all the way to the top to do something like finishing a sketch. These are only a handful of the shortcuts and tips inside of Fusion, but they are some of the most common ones. As you begin to use Fusion a bit more, make sure that you pay attention to the shortcut keys as they pop up and make use of that S key design shortcuts menu to add any tools that you're constantly using right at the cursor whenever you need it.